The book of Ezekiel. Today we come to Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 1. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you are living among a rebellious people. They have eyes to see but do not see, and ears to hear but do not hear. For they are a rebellious people. <clears throat> Ezekiel the prophet, the prophet who obeyed God at all costs, lived among people who knew how to obey God, but they just didn't care, and they wouldn't. Verse 3, Therefore, son of man, pack your belongings for exile, and in the daytime, as they watch, set out and go from where you are to another place. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. During the daytime, while they watch, bring out your belongings <coughs> packed for exile. Then in the evening, while they are watching, go out like those who go into exile. And so God commands Ezekiel to put on a one-man show, as it, as it were. And through his actions, God sends the message to the Israelite exiles. Don't expect to go home anytime soon. Because even those who are still back home, they're going to be leaving. You're not going to be returning. They're going to be leaving as well, just like you have. <clears throat> Verse 8. In the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not that rebellious house of Israel ask you, What are you doing? Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel who are there. Say to them, I am assigned to you. As I have done, so it will be done to them. They will go into exile as captives. And so God tells Ezekiel to explain the meaning behind his actions to the people. That's very important to God. God isn't interested in hiding truth. He's not interested in hiding the meaning of his revelations behind a, a cloak of, of mystery. God reveals truth to people who want truth because God wants his people to understand it. It's that simple. Twelve. The prince among them will put his things on his shoulder at dusk and leave, and a hole will be dug in the wall for him to go through. He will cover his face so that he cannot see the land. I will spread my net for him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylonia, the land of the Chaldeans, but he will not see it, and there he will die. I will scatter to the winds all those around him, his staff, and all his troops. And I will pursue them with drawn sword. God refers to Judah's king Zedekiah as a prince. He's going to try to sneak away in the invasion, but the enemy's going to catch him, and that's exactly what happened. Caught him, gouged out his eyes after he saw his sons murdered. <clears throat> Verse 15. They will know that I am the Lord, when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries, but I will spare a few of them from the sword, famine, and plague, so that in the nations where they go they may acknowledge all their detestable practices, then they will know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> God will spare a few of his people. He will spare them so that they can testify as to why God punished his people in the first place. And they will tell people that God is holy, and that he means business when it comes to punishing sin. And God will keep them alive so that they can do that. 17. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, tremble as you eat your food, and shudder in fear as you drink your water. Say to the people of the land, this is what the sovereign Lord says about those living in Jerusalem and in the land of Israel. They will eat their food in anxiety and drink their water in despair, 
for their land will be stripped of everything in it because of the violence of all who live there. The inhabited towns will be laid waste, and the land will be desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And so God tells Ezekiel to show the Jewish exiles what it's like for an Israelite back home. Ezekiel had to tremble as he ate food. Things are not good back home. That's the message. You think you got a bad year in exile? Well, they don't have it any better. In fact, it's worse. They're scared to death back home because they know what's going to happen. 21, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. For there will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious house, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the Sovereign Lord. <clears throat> the delay in God's prophecies coming to pass uh, made some people, most people, think that they never would come to pass. Instead of believing God's promise of judgment, they believed all the good time preachers who told them there would be no consequences to their sin. And God says, don't listen to those who tell you what you want to hear. Listen to my word. Just because it hasn't come to pass yet doesn't mean that it's not going to come to pass. 26, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel is saying, the vision he sees is for many years from now, and he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, none of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. So some did believe that God would judge, but not in their lifetime. Oh, it's not going to happen for years. You know, it is, it is the most irrelevant question, I think, that anybody can ask. Is God, is God going to judge in our lifetime? Is the Lord going to return in our lifetime and judge? Well, each one of us are going to be judged the second our life ends. And so, that's the thing that we should remember. Chapter 13. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are now prophesying. Say to those who prophesy out of their own imagination, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. And so the false prophets were causing the people to trust in lies. They were giving messages of hope. Meanwhile, God was saying there is no hope because of your sin and your refusal to repent. 4. Your prophets, O Israel, are like jackals among ruins. Jackals are killers. They do a lot of damage. And so did the false prophets. A lot of spiritual damage to God's people. Verse 5. <clears throat> you have not gone up to the breaks in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. The prophets wanted to be popular so they did not warn the people to change their ways. If they would have and if the people would have repented the nation would have been safe. No one could have conquered them if they would have repented but the prophets did not do their job. You know, Any preacher who won't preach against sin it won't call people to repentance is not doing their job. 6. Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. They say the Lord declares when the Lord has not sent them. Yet they expect their words to be fulfilled. Have you not seen false visions and uttered lying divinations when you say the Lord declares though I have not spoken? There are plenty of false prophets and false prophetesses in so-called Christianity today. 
You know, in some churches, people follow by these so-called prophets, and they pronounce they pronounce a prophecy over everybody who who files by. Thus saith the Lord, this is what you're going to do. This is what's going to happen to you. And it's all a bunch of baloney. Their words do not come to pass. They speak the imagination of their minds. They would be stoned to death if it was the Old Testament. 8. Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because of your false words and lying visions, I am against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. The people were impressed by these so-called prophets. They were impressed by their ability to say, Thus says the Lord. And to say it with such conviction, you know. They were so impressed when they heard them say, God showed me this, or the Lord, to Lord told me that. Oh, and it sounded so pious. But the people <clears throat> who are impressed with them, God says will someday despise them after their so-called prophecies do not come to pass. And after they realize that their prophecies, so-called, got them into all sorts of hot water. Verse 10, Because they lead my people astray, saying, Peace, when there is no peace. And because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore, tell those who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. Rain will come in torrents, and I will send hailstones hurling down, and violent winds will burst forth. When the wall collapses, will people not ask you, where is the whitewash you covered it with? And then he says in verse 13, Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says, In my wrath I will unleash a violent wind, and in my anger hailstones and torrents of rain will fall with a destructive fury. I will tear down the wall you have covered with whitewash and will level it to the ground so that its foundations will be laid bare. When it falls, you will be destroyed in it and you will know that I am the Lord. So I will spend my wrath against the wall and against those who cover it with whitewash. I will say to you, the wall is gone and so are those who whitewashed it, those prophets of Israel who prophesied to Jerusalem and saw visions of peace for her when there was no peace, declares the Sovereign Lord. The so-called prophets spoke pleasant-sounding words in order to hide the hard truth. And the hard truth was that Israel needed to repent. And they didn't tell the people that God was going to punish them if they didn't change. And that made God angry, and therefore he promised to punish the false prophets who did not do what was right and did not speak the truth. 17. Now, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people, but preserve your own? You have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. By lying to my people, who listen to lies, you have killed those who should not have died, and have spared those who should not have lived. There were uh, women in Israel who practiced sorcery to deceive God's people as well. So you had the false prophets plus you had them. And I suppose they could be considered false prophets as well. They pretended to, to tell the, the future but it was, it was a lie. And as a result they were responsible for the death of many who should have never died. <clears throat> 20. Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
I'm against your magic charms with which you ensnare people like birds and I will tear them from your arms. I will set free the people that you ensnare like birds. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And so the ungodly women captured and, and, and controlled the minds of the people through their sorceries and God says that he's going to deliver his people from their clutches. He's going to expose these ladies, these women who did these terrible things. 22. Because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and to save their lives, therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will save my people from your hands, and then you will know that I am the Lord. These women turned people away from God. They encouraged people in their sinful ways. God's going to put a halt to their evil doings. And we'll pick it up in chapter 14 next time. Until then, so long everyone.